Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Good morning, you guys. God is good, God is real, God is awesome, God is amazing. It's your girl, Rowan. I'm back, you guys. I am back, I am back, I am back. All right, you guys, so I'm heading to work. It's a gloomy day, you guys, but God spoke to me on last night in my dream. He, he gave me a vision. And this vision, this dream, may be specific for some of you and some of you you might have to read between the lines and get what you need to get out of it so i had a dream that my brother he lives in atlanta um his neighborhood he, he owns his home in his neighborhood they have like a i want to call it a party room or a i, I forget i can't think of the term but it's a room where families can gather and have events, barbecues, and things of that nature. Because it has like picnic tables. It has separate tables. It's closed in so it's not like it's outside. Event. Why couldn't I think of that word? Event room. There's an event room in his neighborhood. Now, mind you, he lives in a nice neighborhood. Not like million dollar, but you know, high price. You know what I'm saying nice neighborhood but in the dream it was like high price okay but he wanted to have a family gathering okay we had the family gathering and we was already there not knowing that another family had intentions on being there okay but we got there first so we had already started you know our event started cooking had the decorations set up and things of that nature now mind you the event space as long as no one is there you can go but if you want to ensure that you get the space you have to put in a request at the office and they will you know basically assign your space depending on how many guests you have and or close off the entire space so normally if someone if the space is closed when you get there that means someone has it but it wasn't closed, okay? Now, also in the dream, I was dating this guy that I used to date, like, in my teenage years, like, like my late teens, you know, as I'm getting out of high school, he was actually my first boyfriend. And he actually is a millionaire, right? So, he was there. Like, where did he come from? I don't know, but he was there in the dream. So, um, that gave me indication that somewhere in the future my life is going to be better off like million millionaire million dollar something okay we was happy kids was happy we had this nice luxury home I, you know everybody was doing well okay but here we go we ran into a issue at the the, the home right so I, as we're sitting down enjoying ourselves here come the the, the neighbors we will say neighbors because it's a neighborhood they walk in and they're like we're supposed to have this space and we're like uh no it was open and so they proceed to say well we have paperwork and some of the people came and they sat at our table and it was just like we're not moving until y'all move and it was just a big you know confrontation okay so the the the, the actual owner of the home who put the request in to hold the space she was like i prayed over it last night so god kept saying do not move okay so whoever you is whoever this message is for we was gonna move we was gonna get up and pack up and go because we didn't need to have to go through that about a space because it was just like a random last minute cookouts that we were doing so we was like okay if y'all got it y'all got it but god said don't move this person tried to hit us with we prayed over the space all night because we knew we were going to have an event and I can't remember what the event was for for them um, but I know it was something like a baby shower or some type of you know engagement or something I don't know but we was like okay well go get your paperwork and when you come back with the paperwork we'll move okay so what we did what we decided to do was let them have piece of the room anyway like we were like go ahead stay on this side we'll go on this side 
because it was a way where we could divide the room, okay? However, there was no dividers up. Like I said, if somebody or uh, put the request in, they will put the dividers up. There was no dividers. So that's a key, key, key term, divide, okay? There was no dividers. So then we waited on her to come back and God kept speaking like, do not move, don't get up, enjoy, party, do what you do. We continued our event, we was praying, we was talking amongst each other and just having a good time. So the lady finally came back, it was like maybe about 15 minutes later she finally came back with the paperwork. But she had a sad look on her face. Um, but I'm, I'm skipping in between now because before that we had already reached out to the complex or I mean to the the neighborhood association and they was like well no they didn't they didn't close off the entire room they only have what that long it was a long table they only have this long table and the table reminded me of when the uh, when Jesus was with the 12 disciples it was that type of table so they had already told us that so when she came back we was waiting on her before we said to, to her so she came back with a sad look so we was like oh what's wrong she was like well it turns out i only got this one space she said but i was praying over it because i wanted this event to be great and it just so happened that we had more people than we expected so now we need more space so um eventually we ended up dividing a room um again there was no dividers but we divided the room with some type of curtain or sheet or something that we had. Um, oh, the tablecloths. So we put the tablecloths off so that they can have their half, we can have our half. However, God was speaking. God gave me, he gave me the word or message um, in, in pertaining to y'all. I don't know my Bible ver verbatim. I don't know the exact Bible verse, but I'm going to pull it up. But when the enemy tries to come up against you, you have to remind him of who you are in Christ. You have to remind him that you're a child of God. You have to remind him that no matter how hard they try to make you move, you shall not be moved. So for whoever this message is for, even though that person tried to hit us with Bible quotes and that they prayed over this situation, God is bigger. And if you put God first in everything that you do, no matter how hard a person tries to move you, you shall not be moved. God also reminded me of the Bible verse when it talks about um, coming against God's uh, people, do my prophet no harm. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I can't think right now because I'm, I'm, I'm on lack of sleep. But do... Uh, the prophet no harm i'm gonna look it up in a minute and, and, and let you guys um know exactly what, what i'm talking about i'm about to be to a stop but god is saying to you do not allow your situation or people to hinder you from your celebration okay because some of you are about to be celebrating it's a celebration some of you are about to be celebrating. However, there's definitely some divide that's going to take place first. And what God is saying, hallelujah, Jesus, I hear you, Lord. What God is saying, the division is going to be necessary in order for you to get to that place of celebration. Because right now, you got some people who, forgive me, I didn't want to say it, but you got some people who are pretending to be God's children. They are pretending to love God. They are pretending to be a witness. False witnesses. God is saying we have some false witnesses among us. And you have to be cautious. You have to be prepared to fight. Not physically, but spiritually. So God is saying there is going to be some celebrating. But there's going to be some division that has to take place before the celebration happens. They're going to be on their side. You're going to be on your side. And everything is going to be beautiful. I see some millionaires. God showed me millionaire. He showed me some millionaires. He showed me some new homes. He showed me peace. And he showed me some of you are being elevated spiritually, emotionally, 
um, and socially, okay, to the point that when you're getting, when you come up against things like that, you'll be able to handle it without confrontation, okay? So instead of arguing, come to a resolution is what God is saying. You're going to be that person that comes to a rev- a resolution versus arguing, fighting. Um, we are experiencing a lot of that. A lot of that. Um, uh, but God is saying, um, mm-mm, no, it's, it's no more in your life, whoever you are. It's no more in your life. But I'm going to pull up this, this, this quote, this uh, Bible scripture, and I'll be right back. All right, you guys. So I don't know why I can't re- never remember this. Like I said, my brain is, is on E right now. But it is First Chronicles 16 and 22. And this is the King James Version. It says, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Okay? So, you are an anointed person. Whoever you are, you are such an anointed person. And people are trying to touch you. They're trying to harm you. But God has that separate, that wall, separating you from them. God says, I will not allow them to touch you. They're going to try to touch you. They're going to try to get at you. And the scripture also reads, be imitators of God. Therefore, become imitators of God. Copy him and follow his example. You are a prime example of who God is. You've been living your life the godly way. And you have been prophesying, showing others who God is. And God is rewarding you. There's a party at the end. He is rewarding you for what you have been doing for him. God says, and walk continually in love. See, that, that was love there. The gathering, the, the, the confrontation, but in the end, we were able to celebrate together. God said, and walk continually in love. That is value one another, practice empathy. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Heavenly Father God. Listen, to, I'm telling you, I just looked this up. Y'all witnessed this. And walk continually in love that is value one another, practice empathy and compassion, unselfishly seeking the best for others, just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us, an offering and sacrifice to God slain for you, so that it become a sweet fragrance. God showed me this in a dream, guys. If God a real Whoever telling these folks God is not real, that it's all science, it's Mother Earth, all these things, there's a presence. And if you don't feel that presence, I don't know what to tell you, but I'm telling you right now, God show me, I I am, I promise you guys, I wish there was a way for me to have a dream and record the dream. Because this was my dream. Everything that I said that happened, and I was going to wait till later to tell you this, but I knew I was going to forget because it was a dream, okay? But just as plain as day, God is bringing out some millionaires. God is bringing out some brand new homes. God is releasing us from evil. He's releasing us from an evil mindset. He was releasing us from not being able to empathize with others, okay? Like, empathy is so important right now. Like, we... So we're living selfishly to the point that we, and I just had this conversation yesterday. We're living so selfishly that we can't think about others when we make decisions. We make decisions solely on how we feel, not how it's going to affect the next person. And reality is going to affect us in the future because whatever we decide to do, it trickles down generationally. So... If I'm just thinking about self and my own pleasure, my own need, like in my home, let's just prime example, you children, you know, and I'm just only using this example because I don't do it. But if you, if you, if you smoke drugs, you, you know, weed, whatever, you, whatever, hopefully I won't get dang for that. But if you are a drug user, but you know, it's going to harm your children, you have to decide, do I want to smoke these drugs around my kids and harm my kids or do I want to just do it because I want to get high it's the same concept okay 
you have to think about decisions you make. I don't know why that came up, why that popped up. I think because I see somebody in the background smoking, but whatever. You have to think about these at your actions and how it's going to affect your kids because guess what what's going to happen is your child is going to see you doing it and they're going to want to do it and then it's going to you know affect them later on in life so you have to really be conscious of that so that empathy god is saying get get think before you react but again there's going to be some division so be prepared be prepared also Pay attention to your surroundings. Pay attention to the people that speak over your life. Pay attention to them. Because not everybody has your best interest. Not everybody is godly. Not everybody is working for God. They're working again for self. They have no empathy for you. Because their goal is to make sure that they are good. Okay? So pay attention to all that. Don't let nobody false prophesy to you either. Because a lot of people are being told certain things and they're believing in it and they're running with it. Talk to God first. God is going to, I promise you, he's going to reveal it to you before he reveal it to them. Okay? But that's all I have for you guys because I got to go to work. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. And as always, be a blessing to others. Make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe. Bye.